I wanted to give a review of the Keen Ram Slapstick now that I've been skating it for about three months and I'm feeling pretty comfortable with it. Um, and I put about 2,000 slappies on it so far. So, um, yeah, I think I'm pretty ready to talk about it, what I like about it, um, any worries I might have if I think it's worth it. So, um, let's break it all down. So, um, here is a, a $500 slapstick. I got the eight inch variation with the skate light on top because I'm hoping that, um, you know, I don't have to worry about it lasting or longevity. So I spent a few bucks extra on the, on the skate light version. And, um, I know people are going to say I could build that for cheaper. Um, you can't. And so I'm going to talk about why there's a, there's actually one very unique reason why you can't really build this and it'd be the exact same obstacle. Um, I guess I'll start with that. So, <clears throat> um, this is a CNC cut end cap. Um, by CNC cut, I mean it's machine cut. There's a transition to it. It's not just straight. It's not just flat. It's not a very predictable curve either. I believe it really ramps up the curve from here to here. Um, but you'd have to be a robot to really tell how how specific that transition is and to to replicate that um it would be very difficult and so i guess that's the number one reason why i think it's unique but um there's also other reasons so let's dig into it this coping this coping is super thick um you can't buy this coping at home depot you can't buy it at lowe's um you can't buy it at your general hardware store you're just not going to find it what you're going to find is this this is a ramp tech quarter pipe and I know the lighting is not good, but it's a thinner metal coping, very tingy. Um, it doesn't feel legit. It doesn't feel strong. Um, it doesn't feel like, uh, um, the, the sort of coping that, you know, you would want to pay top dollar for, uh, that cheap coping is what you're going to get at home Depot. Keen does not give you that. Keen gives you quality high grade coping. Um, the skate light, it's very expensive too. Um, the dudes who I see talking about, oh, I'm gonna build that for cheaper. They end up cheaping out with like plywood, masonite. Um, yeah, that's that's not that's not gonna compare to this. Um, you know, I know if you can get some Baltic birch, um, you know, you could probably make something pretty nice. Or if you cut skate light yourself, but you're looking at either 200 bucks for skate light or I priced it the other day about 160 bucks for Baltic Birch um, to match up to Keen's quality. So um, that transition's unique. The materials they use, very good. Um, and you know, the assembly is, is super easy. Um, they made it as easy as possible to put this thing together. I'm not handy with wood. Um, you can see my, my DIY ramps, they don't look as good. Um, you know, I'm, I was very grateful that it was pretty much made ready to go. I assembled it in an hour, um, the whole thing in an hour. So it's, it's pretty quick, pretty easy. And they dummy proofed it. So, um, you're also paying for that. I assembled a slapstick from Keen Ramps. It was pretty easy and straightforward. It ended up being super fun. These dudes telling me online, oh, I'm making that for cheaper. I could have made it for cheaper. Yeah, they end up cheaping out on a good rail. They put PVC on the skate light. They go masonite, um, the Baltic birch. They end up using generic plywood instead. Um, and so, yeah, if you're skating an obstacle like that, I'm sorry to tell you, it's not the same exact ob obstacle as a slapstick, period. If you are if you don't have the exact CNC cut end caps as a, as a keen ram slapstick, it's not a slapstick. It's close, but or it's a variation, or it's a different version of it, but it's not gonna skate exactly like this one is. So it's a very unique obstacle, and that's kind of where I wanna start this, because um, that's why I bought it, because I knew if I make it, it's not gonna come out exactly the same. Um, so um, with that said, let's get over, I guess, the controversial part. Let's talk about the skateboarding aspect of it. So why do I actually like it? Why have I been skating it nonstop for like three months? So, um, um, when I was a teenager, I, I became very scared of skateboarding rails. Um, my grandpa built me about a 20 foot, uh, super long flat bar and well, he made it for me. Um, and I was getting too comfortable seeing how long I could slide on it. 
And one day um, I bit the dust and I shot out at the very end, landed right on my tailbone and I had to walk super far um, to get help. And ever since then I've been scared of rails. And so it took me about 13 or so years later and when I got this slapstick that I am I can comfortably say now that I like skating rails again. Um, you know, for such a long time away from rails, I forgot how to 50-50, now I could do it both ways. I never feebled a rail before until this. I never feeble revert, reverted a rail until I bought this. Um, I never crooked grinded a rail until I bought this. Um, I never felt comfortable with even board slides, front side or back side on a, on a circle rail until I bought this. Um, I was doing them on square rails because it reminded me of a ledge. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until I got this and I started skating it for a few months that now I've been doing crazy stuff on the rails. Um, not only that, um, pretty much every trick I learn on this, I feel like I could take it to a coping on a quarter pipe or a mini ramp. Um, and so three months ago, the only tricks I knew on a mini ramp was rock and roll, rock to fakey, and a slash 5 -0. And the other day I went and I did a fakey, fakey pop rock, um, front side 50-50, front side 5-0, um, switch rock and roll. Man, I just learned so many tricks on transition. And so that kind of gets me to why I love this thing. Because every time I skate it, not only am I learning how to skate street, I'm also learning how to skate transition. And, you know, coincidentally, <laughs> it's called a slapstick, right? Um, I'm learning how to slappy grind too. So I've been hitting um, the curb that I have outside of work. It's like a parking block. Um, and I've actually slappied both ways on it. And I never knew how to slappy until I had this thing. Um, it is a rail, so, you know, it's a little bit different than doing a slappy on a curb or a parking block. Um, but it teaches you about 90% of a slappy. So the other day I hit my the curb by my, my work and I did a front 50 slappy, back 50 slappy. Um, I did a feeble slappy and then slappy board slides. Um, and so I didn't know how to do any of those a few months ago. So really, in the past three months that I've had this, this keen rank, Keen Ram slapstick. I've learned over a dozen rail tricks. Cur well, if you include curb tricks and um, transition tricks, I probably learned 30 new tricks in three months um, just having this thing. I think it's awesome. I think if you're scared of rails, you need to buy this. I think if you're a beginner and you're learning how to skate rails, you need to buy this. Um, the only rail I've ever seen that's kind of comparable is the blunt steel rail, which I'm actually waiting to come in because I want to dabble, dabble with that too. But um, man, so many tricks have been unlocked for me. Like, it's, it's kind of insane. Um, and I'm thinking of a few tricks that I want to try that I've never tried before in my life. And, um, yeah, to be an older dude and to, um, you know, get unscared of rails, I'd say it's been well worth the price. Um, I'm sure you might be wondering criticisms. Really? Like, I don't really have any, but let's talk about, I guess, this couple small criticisms criticisms I could have um all right so I digress when I say this and I got to show you something else uh, to explain my thoughts but uh, when I skate a flat bar every time I hit it I pretty much have to adjust it I might get lucky and have like one uh grind or slide where I don't have to adjust my flat bar rail and I had some dudes asking me like uh, does the slapstick move around? Do you have to adjust it? And generally I have to say, no, it doesn't move and you don't have to adjust it. But um, it does have little micro adjustments when you hit it. I'm, in, I'm mostly skating it in a garage with um, kind of like loosely packed concrete flooring. So it powders up and the box shifts around. When I take it out to the street, the gritty street, it doesn't move around. Um, so if you're skating a super smoothly finished concrete, um, when you hit it, it might move around a little bit. You'll see in my clips it micro adjusting, but generally if I, if I practice a backside grind and I come back and I practice a first side grind, it puts it back into place. So, um, I guess I can give it a, a fraction of a deduction cause it, it does 
like every 10 hits or so, uh, it does maybe adjust sometimes. Um, what else? I don't like how Keen suggested to pair the two together. They said just screw it together. Um, I did that and it's actually working really good, so maybe that's why. <laughs> But um, I'm thinking of putting some, some bolts. I got some bolts here to couple the, the two sections together. Um, that way I could just have more ease of mind that it's never gonna gap out, something like that. But you know, Keen told me to screw it and so far it's working so good so I guess I can't say much about it. Um, hmm, anything else? I noticed this birch because I've actually been moving this thing a lot. There's a little chip here, but there's several layers of the birch, and it's only on one little layer. Um, and that's sp specifically on one end cap. So I guess I like to pick that one up and drag that end cap more than the other side. Uh, so that's probably why it has a itty bitty chip, but it's not um, structurally damaging in any way. It's just the smallest, thinnest chip that I could ever even imagine. It's mostly aesthetic. Um, I painted the end caps that are on the inside uh, to protect from humidity and stuff like that. Um, I used like an outdoor paint. And if I ever see it chipping to where it's a concern, I'm, you know, maybe I'll paint the other end caps. I did use a, um, an enamel outdoor coating to protect the end caps on both sides. But um, I, the chip is so minuscule, I, I don't think I can show it on footage. So it's kind of like right here. Um, so, you know, hardly a complaint. Um, I guess one thing I could complain about is it's very heavy and it's hard to move around. Um, I made this thing here. You see that white thing with wheels? I put a string here, I can roll, I can roll my slapstick around. So I made a device, I call it a slapstick roller. So I can roll my slapstick around. Um, it can be annoying that I use that. I was using a dolly before I made that thing, but, um, I got casters from Harbor Freight for like 12 bucks. I found wood at a construction site, painted it to make it kind of smooth. Um, maybe cost me like 20 bucks to make a slapstick roller. Um, yeah, not too bad, man. Um, but that's really about it. Um, Keen Ram slapstick, 9.5 out of 10. Um, ram tech products two out of ten maybe so if you want a good quality ramp hit up keen um can't go wrong with keen uh, i'm gonna try to put a few clips to show you some things i learned thanks